Welcome to the Transform Your Wedding Podcast, a how-to guide for taking your wedding to a whole new level. Here's your host, Marie Kubin from Rent My Wedding. Hey everyone, today we're talking about five wedding planning tips with celebrity planner David Tutera. David is an entertaining expert and event designer hailed as an artistic visionary. His award-winning global brand is built upon 30 years of experience, along with his dedication and natural ability to transform the ordinary to extraordinary. David's impressive client list includes A-list celebrities, politicians, royalty, and more, with clients like Jennifer Lopez, the Rolling Stones, Kenneth Cole, and Vice President Al Gore at the White House, just to name a few. David has also been on TV for 20 years with features on the top media outlets, as well as hosting seven of his own shows. So I hope you guys enjoy these great tips from David Tutera. Hi, David. Well, thank you so much for joining me. It's great to be with you and uh, to get a chance to, to talk with yourself, of course, and your listeners and followers. Yeah, well, I know we're all very excited because, of course, you plan the most amazing weddings. So I really can't wait to hear all of your great advice. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's it's been a long journey. It's been 30 plus years. And I, I was just writing something this morning where I was sharing how much I consistently have the passion for. Even, you know, three decades later, I'm still loving what I do. And I'd love to share my my insight. I never say my advice is advice. It's sort of a help, helpful guide to let vendors and also let consumers know what might be an easier route to take to enjoy the process even more. Amazing. Yeah, you've definitely, I'm sure, learned so much along the way with all of that experience. So I'm um, really excited that you're going to give us kind of your top five insights for weddings today. So I know there's a lot to cover. Why don't we jump right in? What is your number one tip for how to have an amazing wedding? Well, you know, here, here's my philosophy on this. And I think what's real important is, is that when the weddings become somewhat robotic and um, there seems to be a lack often of a personality or an energy that's missing, which is interestingly an odd you know, recap on it because it's all based upon love. So what I like to tell um, everyone that's planning a wedding, um, and we'll sort of split this up between if you're a consumer planning your own wedding or you're a vendor planning your client's wedding, it's really important that your wedding stands out. And this is not a budgetary thing. It's trying to figure out what is step number one, your vision. What is your vision for your celebration, for your wedding? And what do you want your guests to leave remembering what that vision was when they were there? Because often I do believe that, including myself, when I go to someone's wedding, we kind of shut down because we know the formula and we know the routine and vendors and Consumers work so hard to find all those wonderful people to make your, your wedding dreams come true. So step one, think outside the box, have a vision, a solid vision um, that you can communicate with the people that you're gonna to begin to hire. So, you're, so your guests walk away, never forgetting that vision of that specific wedding. Yeah, I think that's so true. Just making your wedding unique and personal to yourself and not trying to do what you've seen on Pinterest or copy someone else's wedding, but just really making it your own, I think is such great advice. Thank you. And it is really telling your story. I mean, a vision sort of equates to a story and the story is a couple. And if you can take that vision and turn it into a story that becomes a true life story, it's what makes it unique and magical. Definitely. Now, when you're working with clients or your team is, um, how do you help them kind of figure out their vision if they're struggling with that? Any tips there? It's, uh, you know, sometimes that's a really easy answer to get it, to get from a client. And often sometimes it takes a long time to understand what it is. And sometimes they don't even know what their vision or their story is. Um, what I do is it's the first question I ask before I'm even hired. Um, I, I took a, a consultation um, yesterday with a potential new client and you know, I, I ask them, what is their vision? What is, what is it they want to accomplish? And when I begin to get those adjectives and those details, I start to write them down. And I, I kind of call it a wedding puzzle. I, I take those pieces and I begin to kind of mentally lay them out for my client. And I don't really get a chance to understand what exactly it is until time has been put into the process. And, you know, the first question asked is before I'm hired. All the questions that happen after I'm hired really allow the puzzle to sort of see it's, 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 a semblance 
And then I'm able to allow myself to find all the right pieces to allow everything to come to life. Often I have to sometimes hand deliver it to the client because they're confused by, you know, descriptions of style or adjectives of what they want to experience. And, you know, I've done this a long time. Most couples are doing this for their very first time and they need a little, you know, they need a little guidance. So that's what I'm here for. Awesome. Yeah. I love that analogy, like putting together a puzzle. I think that really kind of sums up the job of a wedding planner. So I love that. Yeah. So good. Well, what is your second tip for wedding planning? So after you have the vision, you know, the big question that nobody wants to really talk about is what is your budget? Um, and, you know, it sometimes can be reversed. One and two can become two and one. And, you know, budget sort of, you know, should rule the, the uh, assemblance of how you hire your vendors. So you cannot build a house if you don't know what the budget is from the foundation up. Right. So mm -hmm. it's the same analogy for a wedding. You, you need to know what is your your end game? What is your, you know, hardcore number that you know you can afford? And you have to really be honest. You have to be honest with yourselves as a couple, honest with whomever may be paying for it, whether it's yourself or family members. And then you have to really be very solid with getting the facts from your planner or if you're doing it on your own um, on what each vendor is going to be running. And I strongly believe when you, when you determine what your budget is and then you collectively figure out what that is, you then move on to step three, um, which is then acquiring proposals, not contracts, proposals from vendors. So I just kind of slid into step number three because after budget comes obviously finding the vendors. Definitely. And I like that you pointed out you're getting proposals, not contracts. So you want to really um, you know, do your research and look into different vendors. How do you approach that step of it when you're in that process of trying to find the right vendor? Um, you, a, a client or a planner needs to understand step one, the vision, step two, the budget, and then understand a potential vendor that will or will not be able to fit in within those guidelines. And a good, a good planner will be able to um, not just necessarily negotiate, but more importantly, navigate on who those vendors um, can be presented to, to a client. And, and what I do is I would never show then a client, excuse me, I would never show a client a proposal that I know is completely not in their range. And, you know, we know that, you know, the simplicity of step one, two, three is that when finding vendors, we know that predominantly the budget goes to food and beverage, or, or I should say venue, food and beverage, and typically entertainment and decor. What happens often is that some planners and most consumers will start to order and get the easier things, which are simple to find and less in dollar amount. But what happens is when you get to the big ticket items later in down, down the planning process, you realize that maybe some of those things that you first started out with are not as nece not necessities that you should have applied that money to, which were the bigger ticket items. So it's laying it out. It's, it's again, giving yourself, this is a business transaction now. So you have to lay this out like a business deal, even though it's emotional and it's a wedding and literally lay out every vendor you need that most people should know what they are and figure out the budget based upon the proposals and then get second budgets or second proposals to put towards your budget from secondary vendors to see who might fit the equation of your final outcome, which is your budget. Okay. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. So you really don't want to be hiring any of your vendors until you've really just penciled them all into yeah. that budget and made sure that every vendor's price is going to fit within that overall amount that you have for the wedding. And be honest. It's, you know, a lot of people get so enamored by the, you know, the beauty of putting it together a wedding and the excitement and the joy. And so it, all of that sort of sometimes clouds over what you need to do, which is of course handle this, like I said, from the foundation all the way to the roof. Definitely. And now I'm sure you've seen a lot of different scenarios with clients. Have you ever had, you know, a situation where the client just either 
fell in love with a vendor that was way out of budget. And, you know, what do you do in that situation? Do you advise them to look elsewhere? Or do you say, go for it and splurge? Or what's the best way to approach those situations? I am a super honest planner. So when I'm having a, uh, a relationship with our with my clients, I have always say from the very beginning that if I think that you might be going in an area or a direction that might not be best suited for you, I'll be, I'll super be honest. And, you know, I've seen it where sometimes they'll spend too much money on a cake. Um, not that I'm saying a cake is not important, but if we need those funds to go towards, you know, your menu as in your dinner or towards your flowers, which are visual or towards, you know, a eight piece band versus a four piece band, we should look at the bigger picture. Um, but I have guided them and often listened and sometimes not um, that they need to know that this is a better outcome because it may not be missed by the guests or yourselves for that matter um, if you chose not to do that. Um, I always also feel that when clients come to me with ideas that are what I know costly, to, which will be costly, I try to communicate that even before we go down the process of finding bids. Um, because I don't want it to burst their bubble when they find out it's just not possible financially. Everything's possible when, you know, you can spend the money, but I don't want people to think they're getting less because they can't afford it based on their budget. I want everyone's wedding, whether it's this dollar or this figure, um, to feel like they've gotten the wedding that they deserve to have. Yeah, definitely. I think that ties into what you said in the beginning too. As long as you're keeping that vision in place and you're really doing what matters to you and it's all about you, I think no matter what your budget is, you're going to be so happy with the outcome. Correct. Very much yeah. so. Okay. So let's jump into number four. Number four to me is now that you've gone down the process and you really have all of what we just talked about in place, to me now it's about the details. To me, uh, a wedding that strikes like perfection has got nothing to do with the dollar figure. It's the little teeny little moments that make me walk away, not just as a planner, but also potentially as a guest where I go, wow, they really thought through how to tell this story, right? Because we started with the vision and the concepts and all of those things. But when you start to see little things that are happening in the timeline, and timelines don't cost you money, it's just the navigation of the storytelling. And when people are becoming um, interactive participants as in the guests and not just passive sitting there waiting for the next thing to happen, they then become part of this journey, this ride. Um, and they realize the details not only change the environment and not only add to the storytelling, it connects the, 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 the guests to the couple. And often, there are guests that don't know the details of one of the couples. You know, they don't know maybe the bride or the groom or whomever in the couples, you know, on the other side or friendship of the family. Um, they will, will walk away knowing a little bit of, of the history of them as a couple and also the history of them as individuals. And to me, it should be not just about walking down the aisle, cutting the cake, the, the, you know, your first dance. There needs to be like layers. So those details are to me so essential and make your wedding so much unique, more unique and stand out. Definitely. Yeah. And you know, your face lit up when you said details, so I can tell like, that's what you love. And you know, that's what I love too. I'm all about the details, especially the decor and telling that story with the decor and all of those little details is just, I think such amazing advice. And some people think that, you know, I've often been told, why do you spend so much on the details as in so much time on the details? And no one notices it. Actually, it's quite the opposite. Um, when you have enough details, I mean, if it's one little thing happening at a place setting, sure, they may miss that. But if you're doing the drops of details everywhere at every moment, people begin to pick up on it. It's just, it's human nature. And they'll go home and think about it. And then they'll say to someone, gosh, there was this moment and this item and this little trinket or this, this story that was told that makes me remember that wedding more than all the other weddings that I may have gone to. Definitely. Yeah. Keeping everyone engaged and interested when there's so many different details and making it an adventure. Like you said, I love that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So how about number five? Number five is, I touched on it a little bit, but number five is very important and it is often some, sometimes the hardest. It's finding the right cast. And when I say cast, like a cast of a Broadway show or a movie, that cast is your team and your team is your backbone. 
And finding the vendors, which is the ultimate, ultimate task, number five, is finding the right vendors for the budget, for the vision, telling the story, and getting those details, bring you to the collaboration of a group of people that literally help you execute what the client deserves to have. Now, just because somebody has a great reputation um, doesn't necessarily mean that they're the perfect fit for this client. So, you know, my when I curate vendors for a project, it isn't something that happens immediately. So, for example, like this one particular client I'm working with, getting to know them and navigating their vision and then finding who might be right for that could take months. And it, that may not have anything to do with budget, but it may just be the person that has the right product or that understands the concept and wants to be part of a team. A lot of vendors often are not team players. And I always look for team players that want to make all of us look good. Not me. Everyone look great because if we all look great, the client is happy and they've had the most amazing experience. Definitely. Yeah. The vendor team is so important. And I love how you even put that curating your vendors and curating your team, because it really is um, so critical because that's, what's going to make or break the wedding. And I think that's something that couples should realize. It's not just about getting through that part as fast as you can and hiring all the vendors and getting it done. You really should take your time and make sure you've got the right vendors that are going to fit your that's style right. and budget and everything else. I mean, you know, Marie, it's, it's, I mean, it literally, can ruin you or make you with the wrong and the right vendors. And, you know, one of the things I've always believed, because I worked locally, then domestically, now globally, if you have the right vendors, you can shine and do such a great job. And with the one wrong, one bad apple in a bunch can spread like wildfire and it just is it's toxic. And that's something I really work to avoid. Yeah, absolutely. And I know since you work globally, I'm sure you've had to go into markets where maybe you've never done a wedding before. So how do you find vendors in that situation where you just don't have any pre-existing relationships? It's very difficult. I have worked in some very um, unique experiences in unique places. And when I am hired by a client to go into Asia or go into Africa or go into Europe or wherever, Australia, um, it's like a, it's almost like a scavenger hunt. It's kind of interesting because what I try to avoid, and I've done really well at this, is to be bringing my vendors from the States to another country. Um, I don't want to take business away from a, a vendor that is possibly the, a better vendor or very, very talented. So I go in in advance after I've been hired and I begin to take meetings typically with potential vendors. Um, and that takes an enormous amount of time to ask questions first to find out who they are. Um, doesn't necessarily mean because someone says that this is the best person in Indonesia. I, I don't know, I don't know what they can do until I see their work. Um, mm -hmm. So I typically need a longer lead time um, from contract to execution, um, to back to the curation of vendors um, to see their work. And I will tell you more often than not, I'm incredibly surprised and impressed by the vendors that are outside of the United States. And I'm very, very proud of our, our vendors here in the, in the US, but to find these needle in a haystack sort of diamond in a rough uh, vendors, it blows my mind the, the uniqueness and creativity and kindness that they all have. So they wanna to learn too. So it, it makes for a great relationship. Definitely, good. Well, we went through everything. I love this. So five great ways that you can plan an awesome wedding. And that gave us such a great roadmap. So thank you for sharing all of that. And um, how about as well, any resources that you might want to highlight, um, whether for couples or for professionals? Um, you know, I, I would pick one. I, I think that there's a great um, resource that I stumbled on a while ago that I think is great for any vendor that is, putting together vision boards, storyboards, design boards. And many people know the company and many people don't, Canva. Um, I think it's a great online um, source to make you look incredibly professional um, and help with the vision for the consumer, for the clients. Um, and that to me is, you know, everything that we need. We need the colors, the concepts, the renderings, the floor plans, and we put all of, all of that into, into those programs. Uh, again, it's Canva. 
Um, are you familiar with it, Marie? Because it's, it's, I mean, most people um, would find it to be difficult because they think, oh my God, I have to do this online. Um, but it's yeah. just really simple and it really makes you shine. And I think it really helps most importantly the consumer. Yeah, I know on our team, they are using Canva. So I know that's definitely a really great resource. So something everyone should check out for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And now I know you have a new mentorship program as well. Is that right? Yes. So we just started the mentorship program. It's David Tutera Mentorship. And uh, it is a wonderful one-year program where um, all of these little trinkets I've given you, it, it's even a bigger version of that on a, on a uh, monthly basis. Um, it's got case studies of actual events that I've done in the past year. Um, it brings you through uh, logistics, time, you know, timelines, uh, videos, um, and then the case study at the end uh, shares with um, the challenges I have and the, and the ways to avoid the potential issues and the things to look for. The case studies stand out alone for the mentees to be able to learn more on their own, but twice a month there are one hour live um, uh, videos that I do. They're, they're live, but they're also in a library bank for them to go back on with also a task, task sheets for them to um, continue to work on that we follow up Q and A. So every two weeks, um, they're getting one-on-one -on -one content with me and getting a chance to really understand how to do the things you need to do to be a better um, event planner, designer, you know, professional in the industry. So you can literally, um, you know, profit and be successful. Because I think often people, the prof profitability and success sometimes winds up in our industry at the bottom of the totem pole because we're so eager to be um, creative and be there to help our clients that we often don't make the financial success that we should. So this is about being smart, being financially successful, and being, and, and, and being able to have productivity in your day so you have time for yourself with your family and, and, and just have alone time to be able to not be so saturated in, in, this, in this crazy industry that we love so much. Oh, wow. That sounds amazing. And I know there's so many of us out there that would love to benefit from something like that, especially with all of that experience you have. So I think um, I just love that you're opening it up and everything you've already experienced, you're going to kind of do a shortcut for everyone else. They can learn from everything that you've already figured out along the way. So that sounds really amazing. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. it was, it's been a long process in putting it together and uh, it's very organized. And it's something that after we started this our call today is that after 30 years of doing this, I realized to pull back the curtains and I wish that I had had this opportunity when I began because I knew nothing. So I'm not saying I know everything. I, I certainly know I've made mistakes and the mistakes to me are just as important as the successes and I'm willing and wanting to share both sides of that. Wow, awesome. Well, great. Well, um, before we wrap up then, can you tell everyone how they can find out more about the mentorship program and how to follow you and contact Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Um, you can follow me on all my social platforms, which is David Tutera on all the social media uh, platforms. And if you go to davidtutera.com, the mentorship program, as well as the David Tutera Experience program are easily accessible on the menu bar on top. And it is mentorshipwithdavid.com. And that also is a separate link that would bring you right to the opportunity to take a look at the program, um, the cost, and the process. Awesome. Well, great. Well, David, it was a pleasure speaking with you and thank you thank so you. much for being here today. Thank you. It was a pleasure also and um, be healthy, be safe and be happy. So thank you for having me. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed those great tips from David to Tara. And don't forget, you can catch all of our podcast episodes over at transformyourwedding.com. Thanks, guys. I will see you next time. This podcast is brought to you by Rent My Wedding, your one-stop shop for event rentals. Order online and rentals are delivered right to your door. Shipping is free both ways nationwide. Rent lighting, backdrops, photo booths, and more. With the most five-star reviews in the industry, Rent My Wedding makes rentals easy and affordable. Book your rentals today at www.rentmywedding.com.